What is up guys? I do hope you're well. I really do. And welcome back <laughs> to another Entitled Parents. Um, just to address something today, uh, I'm going to be attending a funeral today, Friday. Um, so forgive me if I don't comment on your comments etc because it's gonna be a very long day but I will get back to your comments on Saturday and I will be replying to you guys so much love anyway if you are new here please consider hitting that like that subscribe button and maybe even the notification bell and let's get right into the good stuff entitled mum tries to take my puppy cast me EK entitled kid EM entitled mum mum my mum Dad, my dad, Maggie, my five month old dog, and S, a stranger. My first entitled parent story goes like this. My parents and I went on vacation with my adorable dog Maggie for her first time to an RV place by the beach. So as my dad parks the RV, I was asked to take Maggie for a walk by the beach on the count of her being cooped up in the car all day. So I hooked the leash on her collar and took her for her first little adventure to the beach. Everything was going well. Maggie socialized with other dogs and met a lot of people making herself well known to everyone she came across. Time passed and I realized one and a half hours went by, so I decided to bring her back to the RV. When we got back, Maggie was totally covered in sand, so I gave her a bath before we could go in. Afterwards, I told my parents all that had happened and that there were some really nice people staying at the RV place. The next day, as everyone woke up and got ready for the day, I was charged with taking Maggie outside again, so we went the same route down the beach. That's when I saw this little girl five-year-old's tops, the EK, just looking at my dog with a happy little smile. So I decided to bring Maggie over to the little girl because both Maggie and the girl seemed really excited to see each other. As I did see her smile widen as she raced over to see her, she was about 10 feet away, so I stopped walking over on the count of how fast she was running for someone her age, so I wouldn't bump into her. She's so cute, can I pet her? Yes, but be careful, she's still a puppy and she can be very excited. I was holding the leash tightly so Maggie doesn't jump all over her. Okay, and she starts to pet Maggie. Maggie is just playfully jumping up and down, licking the little girl. They both love it. Cue the EM. Oh, isn't this just the cutest little thing? What's her name? Maggie May. Her actual name. Maggie is just short for it. Maggie May, what a cute name. Can I pet her? Sure, your daughter I presume is petting her, so I don't see why not. The EM crouches next to EK to pet her. Maggie is loving all the attention and belly rubs. She's so cute, Mama. Can we keep her? Please? Sorry, she's not for se- Sure, baby. And she starts to pick up my dog, but notice me still holding the leash. Can we have your dog? My daughter really needs a dog, and she's been such a good girl with great grades. Sorry, no. She's my dog, and I'm not willing to give her away to anyone, much less a stranger. I gently grab the dog into my arms. EK gets upset that I picked my dog up from them. Oh please, I bet you don't even take care of her, being that you're only a teenager. What does me being a teenager has to do with anything? You teens are a bunch of rude, irresponsible people that can't take care of anything, much less a dog. First off, rude. Second, even if you get a dog, when your toddler gets to be a teenager, are you just going to be telling her these things? Of course not, I'm raising her right, unlike your parents did to you. At this point, I was willing to throw sand in her eyes, but I was holding my dog. Second, the sand might get in her kids, or my dog's eyes. I'm just gonna go, I don't want any conflict around my dog. As I walk away, I put Maggie on the ground and proceeded to walk back to the trailer. The EM followed me up to the steps to get from the beach. Where do you think you're going? I start yelling, away from you. A stranger heard me yell and decided to check what's wrong. Stranger said, is anything the matter? Yes, this lady is trying to, EM started yelling. This boy took my dog. I what? Stranger faces the entitled mother. He did now. Tell me about the dog. Why should I? For me to know if you're lying. Uh, well, she's a girl. And her name is, uh, you don't know. No, it's just, a. Uh, her name is Maggie May. So you know her name, but she doesn't. Apparently, even though I told EM Maggie's name, she must have just forgotten it. I think we figured this one out. Kid, you can leave. I'm just going to tell the front desk what happened. I thanked him and he petted Maggie on the head as we left, leaving him with the EM, accidentally. It turns out he was a worker at the RV park because I saw him again with an ID riding a golf cart the next day. Anyway, after this happened, I went back to the trailer, gave Maggie another bath and told my parents what happened. They said not to worry about it and the front desk will deal with it. And this was the last time I saw EM and EK. 
guessing they either left or got kicked out. This was my first recent entitled parents encounter. What is up with people just like picking up other people's pets and trying to walk off? Oh my word. The, but one thing that sort of got me is like when she said about the children having good grace. Do people actually say this stuff? I don't know if it's just like an entitled parent Reddit thing or people actually say these things to try and get free shit. <laughs> oh, before I forget, here's a picture of the puppy. Oh, such a good doggo. EK kicks me out for not being gay. As a long time lurker on my other account, lost password and just made a new one. I love the sub and decided to share my own entitled parent story. Backstory, so a year or so ago, I met a new friend. He was gay and I didn't have a problem with that. I told him I was straight and he was fine with it. We became pretty good friends and eventually started to hang out together after school at his house where this takes place. Cast, entitled mother, obviously. Me, Danny DeVito. F, friend, CD, cool dad. The story begins. So after school, we made our way to his house. He wasn't too far away, so we took a short walk. Once we got to his house, we did the normal teenage things. We played video games, ate junk food, and listened to music. This story takes place when we sit down to eat dinner with F's parents. We are all enjoying Cool Dad's food. He was a really good cook. You know about friend being gay, right? At first, I thought she was just fishing for an answer if I accepted him for being gay. So I didn't see any red flags. Yeah, he told me, and that's perfectly fine with me. What about you? What? Are you gay? I was taken back by a forwardness with the topic, but I didn't have a problem with it because I thought it was just going along with the same topic. No, I personally am not, but it's fine if my friend is. Well, why don't you date friend? He's a very handsome man. I was confused at this point. I just told you, I don't roll that way, but it's okay if F does. EM angrily cut me off. Come on, just date him. There's nothing wrong with him. I start getting a little annoyed. No, I already told you, I'm not gay. He is, and that isn't a problem. We're good friends, and I don't want to be any more than friends with him. Entitled mother was obviously angry. How dare you say that? Say what? You don't like friend. What's wrong with him? He's great and handsome. You will date him. No, I won't. Yes, you will. <laughs> At this point, friend is fed up with his mother's behavior and intervenes. Mum, stop. Just let him be. Fine friend, take your friend to call someone to pick him up. And that was mostly it. I called my parents to pick me up and left. Friend apologised to me, and so did cool dad. I haven't been back since, but still me and F talk and are good friends. Sorry for the no custody battles or parents get arrested, lol. Hope you have enjoyed the story. <laughs> I really did enjoy that one actually, because it was just the way, like, in the middle of it when he says, you will date him, you go, no I won't. Yes, you will. <laughs> like, that's really going to create a great relationship in the end. <laughs> forced to be gay and forced to, <laughs> and forced to be with someone. <laughs> I just don't understand the logic from, like, the entitled mother. Why, why would you force someone to date, like, your son against their will? It just it doesn't make any sense. Then again, I guess no, none of this subreddit does, really. Give my son your cane. I was hesitant to post this story because it almost literally ticks all the common themes with entitled folk. True story though. I was seriously injured in an accident a few years ago. I spent a week in hospital where they decided if I was going to need surgery or not for a back injury. In the end, the docs decided that a back brace would suffice and I got a cane for walking. The brace became part of me for 18 weeks until my doc was satisfied that all the fractures had closed up. 1 out of 10 would not recommend. <laughs> well. I'm moving quite slowly due to pain. I have a script for oxycodone, I hope I pronounced that right, that I go to get filled at a major grocery store with its own pharmacy. I get to the shop and the much hoped for battery powered carts are all in use, so I gingerly walk the length of the store to get to the pharmacy. Once I have my prescription filled, I sit in a waiting area for it to be done. A mum and her son, maybe eight, nine years old, come in after me and sit quite close to me. I move my cane away from the other seats to make room. So far, no problems other than the long pain-filled walk. The kid says, Hey, can I have your cane? It's really cool. I would found a really nice wood one with a very neat grain pattern and colour. Sorry, I can't walk very far without it. The mum says, I'll just let him see it while we wait. Reluctantly, I let the kid have it and begin swinging it around making lightsaber noises. This goes on for a while. My name gets called back for the pharmacist consultation. 
which I guess is required for opiate prescriptions, even before the hyped opiate crisis. I'm gonna need that back now, okay? No, I'm not finished with it yet. I told you to let him play with it. Yes, but I need to go up to the counter and I need my cane to walk. Here's where the real bitch comes out. The mum sneers at me. You are too young to need a cane. I bet you're just faking it to get drugs. I gently take the cane back from the child. No, mum, I was in an accident that's messed up my back and I begin limping my broken down self to the counter. I'm quietly talking to the pharmacist about the drug, when to take them, etc. When this all happens in about 20 seconds. Kid comes up behind me. My mum says you have to give me the cane because you're a big faker and he tries to take it from me. He can't because I'm resting much of my body weight on it to reduce the strain on my back. Kid goes back to mum. Next thing I know, he runs back up to me and kicked the cane from under me. I go down, hard. I fully admit I let out a loud, very unmanly scream as I hit the ground. With a full clamshell brace under my sweatshirt, I was unable to get myself back up. A crowd has formed and the pharmacist nearly leapt the counter to help me up. Once back on my feet, I looked for the mum and the kid and was quite ready to call a cop, then an ambulance. They'd buggered off by that time. After sitting for a while, I am able to stand okay. I was very afraid that they had done more damage to my spine, but I guess I was lucky. One of the store managers brought a disabled cart with a seat and was kind enough to push me out to my car. I never did file a report, though I wish I had. With the CCTV and her name on the prescription she was waiting for, it should have been a slam dunk case. So to others out there, if you get assaulted, file charges. It might be the only way to stop this kind of behavior. Oh, sorry for laughing at the lightsaber bit. I just had this kid like, taking someone's cane and swinging it around some pharmacist making lightsaber noises while the mum glares at their son with admiration grinning away oh god what a sick scene the poor bloke just wanting this cane back <laughs> it's so wrong though the fact that she like called him a faker and then got the kid to go up and kick the cane from under him and he hit the deck and then screamed oh my word what is wrong with people we got to the stage where entitled parents are calling out disabled people and just doing bad shit to them. I mean, come on now. Come on. Ian takes water bottle for EK who proceeds to throw it as far as he could. Usual stuff, I'm on mobile. Me, me, EM entitled mum, EK entitled kid, TM, teammate. Backstory, first I have an autoimmune disease called, oh my God, children's syndrome, I'm going with that which makes my immune system essentially stop my body from producing moisture and hydrating. Because of this, I put this stuff called Hydrus, by the way, 10 out of 10, would recommend for anyone who has hydration issues, in my water to help my body process water and hydrate. Secondly, this is at a high school track meet, and I just ran a 400 meter and an 800 meter. Now for the story. So obviously after my events, I need water, so I went up to my bag and started drinking while talking to my friends. Mid conversation, EM comes over. Uh, excuse me, EK is really thirsty and could use a drink. Uh, alright, I believe there's a concession stand over there. And I point, wasn't a way meat, so I wasn't certain. EM already has an attitude. Well, the thing is, I see you have a thing of water in your hand. If I could just... And she reaches for my bottle. I take a step back so she can't take my bottle. Whoa, hey there, this isn't normal water. I put this stuff called... EM cuts me off. Of course it's water. Now give it here for EM. She snatches the bottle and gives it to EK. Mum, it's not normal water. It has stuff to help hydrate me in it. I need it. The entitled kid after taking a big gulp. This isn't water. This is nasty. And chucks the bottle off the stands into the grass. Let me point out that it wasn't a plastic water bottle. It was a nice mug that I used for coffee. And the Hydra stuff doesn't taste that bad. But it's a very shocking flavour if you was expecting plain water. What the hell is in that? Did you put alcohol in your bottle? You poisoned my son. Gotta love how she assumes it's alcohol and assumes I poisoned my own drink. Teammate says, wait a minute, first off, did you really expect the runner to be drinking alcohol at a meet after his run? And besides, you have no right to take his bottle. Excuse me, young man, but you have no right to talk to me like that. Hey, don't talk to my friend like that. I don't care if you disrespect me, but you're not disrespecting my friends. I told you it wasn't normal water. By now the coach walks over and EM screams at him to kick me off the team and says I put alcohol in my bottle and refused EK water etc. I tell him what actually happened and he says to fetch the bottle. He sorted it out while I was getting the bottle and she was forced to leave. 
Oh my word. Again, just trying to take stuff from people again. Just like literally, and then accusing them of poisoning, poison, and then accusing them of poisoning their child. Like, like he said, why would he actually put alcohol in his own bottle or poison of some sort in his own bottle? What the hell? An 85. My son deserves a hundred. Long time lurker, first time poster. Not as good as some of the posts on here, but I just remembered this today and thought I'd share. This happened in 2015, during my first year teaching middle and high school English at an international school in Asia. There's this one student in my 7th grade class, Brat, who would always complain about his scores and demand higher grade, despite having to put in little to no effort. Every semester, the students are required to write in the rate of essay, and they really put in extra effort as there was a prize for the top 3 high scores. Brat had given me a real piece of crap essay to be honest. It looked like he had written it on a bus on the way to school, as the letters were written wobbly and not in a proper line. To be honest, he rarely paid attention in class and was an absolute pain in the butt every chance he got, so I wasn't surprised when he turned in a poorly written essay. Anyways, I handed back the essay and Brat asked me, rather rudely, why I hadn't gotten an 85. B. Brat. Me. Me. Teacher, why did I get an 85? Why not 100? Well, it lacks proper structure, you didn't use examples, and it seemed like you didn't use your best effort. But I worked really hard on it. Well, I grade you guys on a curve, so you should have actually gotten a 70-something, but because of this curve, it's actually much higher than it should have been. Side note, I have to grade it on a curve, as it's a requirement from school. If this was my home country, he would have failed. It's not fair, teacher. Well, that's the score you're getting. If you have a problem, go look at some of your classmates' essays, and you can compare with them. Brat walks away pouting, and I continue on with my life. A few days later, my supervisor calls me to her office, and I see a parent with her. She asks me to sit down, and she lets me know that this is Brat's mum, and she wants to talk about the score I gave him. She also let me know that she will be there to translate because Brat's mum can't speak any English. S, my supervisor, head of the English department. EM, entitled mum, me, me. Supervisor says, Brat's mother is really upset about his score, and wants to know why he didn't get 100. I already told him why. He didn't put in a lot of effort and didn't follow proper essay structure, so I think 85 is more than fair. But he really did put in a lot of work. I saw him up late every night working on his essay. I just don't think it's fair that he worked so hard and got such a low score. He deserves a high score for working so hard. His score isn't low, it's an 85. He shouldn't have gotten 70 something, but I curved the scores, so it's honestly higher than he deserves. If you won't change your score, then you need to come to my home once a week and teach him how to write an essay properly since he clearly doesn't know how. Supervisor, out of curiosity, where does he live? Oh, he lives in this city. He takes a bus about an hour each day to get there. So, he wants me to spend at least three hours of my precious free time and limited funds every week to come and teach her kid something he had already learned in class. Absolutely not. I'll tell her you'll think about it. My supervisor said something that seemed to appease EM, and I was told I could leave. I had Brat again when he was in 10th grade, and this time we were writing research papers. A quick use of plagiarism software revealed he had stolen his entire essay, and I happily gave him a zero, to which he complained about endlessly. I guess he was too embarrassed to tell his mum, because I never saw her again after that meeting when he was in 7th grade. What is with the supervisor telling that you think about it? It's surely that's getting false hope and just expect... You're, you're gonna see that EM again at some point. That's what I'd have thought. I'd have like, no, don't tell her that, because there's no way I'm teaching that little shit again, you know? <laughs> But I'm glad you got like you got a bit of revenge in there as well and got to give him a zero because you used that. I didn't know there was such thing as like plagiarism software. I have to look that up. <laughs> I could have got in trouble in school for that shit. <laughs> anyway, guys, as always, I'd just like to say a massive thank you for all your support. It's just absolutely amazing. So thank you guys. Take care now. Goodbye.